What do you mean? This big product launch from Intel needs a big introduction because we've just ended an era where big problems genuinely now have big solutions. And because I actually know, I feel like I absolutely need to emphasize one of the struggles of the past that we've just consigned to the history books. In fact, generations of the future will not know the struggles of the past of generations gone before. I've managed to locate and source some never seen before footage to demonstrate this point. It's from the old historic London, England. It's gonna give you a real, <laughs> real fly on the wall insight into this technical pandemic of a problem that's plagued workers across the world. Now I've had to add some subtitles as the old English language used in this archive footage might confuse some of the continental viewers, but maybe you can relate to this coercive tale where antagonizing force collides with raw frustration. Marty, what are you doing? You daffer down dilly plonker, aside from being a Michael Caine and my hog and dars. Why am I on the dog and bone asking you what you possibly could be doing that's more important than helping the ginger beers with the cherry rob work? This Uncle Bob's turning into a rum and coke of a Jackie Brambles. We need this done in the next hour, Marty. What are you doing? Uh, Largo's just knocked up a few new point cloud scan in the side post where the paper's actually going, said I need to use this new point cloud scan before I can do anything else. Well, Marty, as much as I have sympathy for your cause, and as much as your Frankie Tatori has all the dawn French of a Lionel Blair predicament, can't you be doing something else in the Sean Bean Lager and Lime? Uh, when was the last time you point a point cloud scan and you lost my laptop's completely dead? I didn't have the power, I've got to wait for this point cloud import before I can do anything else. Oh, uh, that's sadly where this tape ends. But maybe that story rings some bells and strikes a chord. Whatever line of work you're in, whatever you're doing, you've set up a big job and for this foreseeable, your system's offline and it's jammed up. Essentially, it's unusable whilst all that's going on. And if all that does sound familiar, well, mate, you might be interested to learn that mobile workstations are getting switched up a gear with the announcement of the new 12th gen Intel Core HX series processors to bring in all the capabilities of the once branded mobile Xeon platform over to the core platform. So it kind of goes without saying, mate, in this video, we're gonna be talking a lot about cores. And no, I, I don't mean the late 90s, early 2000s, or some Irish pop rock band either. <laughs> couldn't resist it. Anyway, now, not too long ago, Intel made a huge transition away from traditional CPU architecture when they introduced their hybrid 12th generation core desktop platform to the world. And this enabled the reality of having hyper-threaded performance cores for priority Windows-based tasks on your P cores, combined with non-hyper-threaded cores known as efficiency or E cores, for all your background tasks all together on the same CPU. And then there's this module integrated on the CPU known as the Thread Director, which when paired with Windows 11, prioritizes all of your workloads onto the right core, all based on what's happening within Windows. But what does all this actually mean in the real world? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? What does it mean to my business? Why am I even, why are you talking to me? What are you even doing here, Neil? What? That's a good question, mate. Glad you asked it. Well, this is all tried and tested now on desktop, mate, but what about mobile? What about laptops? Can this fairly new concept of hard-hitting performance cores and thread directing, can this all really work inside a relatively thin laptop and not be, you know, too far behind the productivity gains that users are now seeing on desktop? Hmm. Well, mate, the name Mobile Xeon might be no more, but it lives on in the Core HX series with the Core i9-12950HX being the flagship processor for mobile workstations. That one, the 12850HX and the 12600HX, well, they're all going to support Intel vPro Enterprise Security and Remote Management Technologies, as well as being the processors in the lineup that are going to support ECC memory options. So those are the ones that you're probably going to be finding in your mobile workstations all in. This new HX series is going to bring up to 16 total cores, 8 performance and 8 efficiency cores, totaling 24 potentially unlocked and overclockable threads, hitting up to 5 gigahertz on those performance cores and 3.6 gigahertz on the efficiency cores, along with enabling up to 128 gigs of DDR5 RAM with hardware ECC support, like I mentioned before, on those selected SKUs, as well as bringing PCI Express Gen 5 for discrete graphics as well. Not only rivaling stats that we're seeing on the desktop counterparts for 12th gen, but in many cases, mate, HX is gonna rival desktop performance and capability. So we were hearing at the start, mate, about all the big technical problems that are now having big technical solutions thrown at them. And this is exactly what I'm referring to. They call this concurrency. Take Marty, remember Marty back from the start and his point cloud import drama. Here it is 
on a previous generation unit. During the point cloud ingest, all the processor cores are indeed put to 100% utilization, which leaves pretty much nothing else on the table left for other tasks. And that's what Marty means by my laptop's dead. It's giving everything that it's got to the point cloud import, but on this new hybrid architecture, importing the point cloud indeed uses all the resource available, but if you or your employees have got other things that they need to be getting on with in the meantime, and this point cloud import is something that they don't urgently need, and they can just let it run in the background, well, you can simply minimize that point cloud import window and let the Intel thread director assign that task to run on just the efficiency cores, which it does automatically, puts it as a background task, leaving those eight powerful high thread performance cores with 16 threads available to just get on with the rest of your work. You can almost think of this like a system within a system. You've currently got a massive point cloud import running on eight cores in the background, yet you've still got as many cores and threads free as last year's most powerful mobile workstation on the market. And that'll work for most computationally heavy tasks, rendering, simulation, video export. Make the days of having employees or you doing absolutely nothing because of an unresponsive system due to a big job processing are basically in the past. Now, if I was watching this, I'd probably be thinking, right, that's, mate, that's all well and good. That's great and all, right? But surely they've had to compromise a fair amount of performance to cram in all this newfound utility in, into a laptop, though. Well, cards on the table, I, I personally did think that. And then I tested it. And I've absolutely no idea how Intel have managed this, but they've somehow engineered a mobile platform that slots in here alongside this kind of company of these kinds of workloads. That's right, the mobile 12900HX across nine fairly taxing Autodesk Revit modeling tests is, has actual literal desktop class performance matching the Hero Core i9 desktop 12900K processor, which can I add, when I did those tests, it was under liquid cooling using pretty much a storage container for a radiator. The same goes for Autodesk Inventor 3D CAD tests as well, which were a mixture of heavy duty assembly, drawing and part modeling workflows amongst many other heavy tests and for any big sustained rendering jobs, still absolutely unreal performance in context of those previous generation desktop parts sitting below it. And now just so there's no confusion, all the tests that you've seen in this video are done using the Core i9 12900HX, which is actually functionally identical to the 12950HX, which is the one that we're gonna be mostly recommending for the heavy engineering workloads, creative workloads, you know, the ISV certified mobile workstations, because that's the one that's got vPro in it and ECC support. All the tests as well were done using a very early pre-production MSI unit, uh, hence the lack of any temperatures and system specifics shown in this video. But the HX series parts are quoted with a base power of 55 watts with a fairly hefty turbo power draw of 157 watts. But as I've always said, you don't buy a mobile workstation if you're concerned about battery life or if you're concerned about electricity costs for your work PC. But now is not the time to get into that not the time, Neil. Either way, HX is bringing ECC memory capabilities for the first time ever to the core family for those mission critical scenarios, along with receiving additional PCI Express Gen 4 lanes for storage through the platform controller hub, which is gonna enable four M.2 SSDs inside a mobile unit, uh, which one of those as well can be PCI Express Gen 5. Again, that's, that's allowing for greater RAID mirroring and striving for extreme storage performance. So thank you to Intel for sponsoring this video and for bringing to the mobile market not only 12th gen desktop class performance, but also genuine heavy multitasking concurrent workload capabilities like you've seen in this video, which reach far beyond what was always previously possible with traditional hyper-threading. Now the new 12th generation HX series processors, well mate, they're out now and you'll begin seeing them available for spec selection in select mobile systems from today. Stay tuned to my channel as well as I hope we get the chance to take a deeper and closer look at all the individual HX parts as they become available in those retail units. But for now, welcome to the next generation of mobile performance and utility with the 12th generation HX series from Intel.